Hey, I'm Russ. And I'm Steve. Growing up in the 80s, we were introduced to video games, movies, and technology that made a lasting impression on us and forever enriched our lives. I think I'm gonna cry! It's been a fascinating journey to be a part of, one that we constantly treasure. Higher! <laughs> booty! Our goal is simple. Share our magical moments of discovery and geek out with lovely folks, just like you. Ah, uh, achievement unlocked! So if you crave pixel goodness, memorable moments, and experiences that make your inner child do the happy dance, you've come to the right place. Let's do this! Welcome to Joygasm! Ah, <laughs> yeah! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Joygasm, where we talk about video games, movies, and pop culture. My name is Russ, Xbox Live Toaster 360, and joining me is my vertically challenged sibling, Steve, Xbox Live Stevevich, as we spawn episode 29 on this July 29th, 2017. What's happening? <laughs> Steve, <laughs> you, you, you sound real excited. Russ, I am really excited. And why exactly are you excited, Steve? Well, you've uh, invited me over to not just watch, but play mm -hmm. Forza Horizon 3 Hot Wheels Edition. Though I've seen it before, I haven't played it, and uh, now I've had last night and this morning playing it. I probably shouldn't have even gone to sleep. I should have just stayed here and let you go to bed. <laughs> you, you were more than welcome to crash on the couch and just play <laughs> to your <laughs> heart's content. I got a little AC, a little blanket, and uh, <laughs> get a little nappy nap and keep on playing. A little hot wheels to keep you company. I tell you, Russ, you know, you know what I feel right now? I, I have no idea. If this were the last game I ever played... Oh, I'd be a very happy man. You heard it first right here on Joygasm, folks. Steve has found the game to end all games <sighs> for him. I think he's feeling uh, Nirvana. Gaming I, Nirvana yeah, right now. I, yeah, gaming Nirvana. The only, the only thing I could think that could possibly make it better is to play it on the, the, the Xbox One X. Not, just, to be cons not to be confused with the S. The X. X as an X. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just for a little bit faster low at times and just to push the game as far as it can go. And uh, I mean, it, the, anybody who made, everybody who made this game at what was it? Turn 10 studios, turn 10, turn 10. I mean, they're, they're either actually, a, you know what? what? I don't believe it was, was turn it? 10. You mean, let me do a little, was it? I know Turn 10 obviously owns the whole yeah. Forza series, but um, let me see who the actual developer was. Anyway, you just go ahead and keep bantering there, Steve. They must, A, love cars, love games, love details, or all of the above, because I, I'm, I'm, I can only pinpoint a couple of, of discrepancies about the game, and you know how critical I am. And it, but there's so much good that it outweighs the bad that you just forgive what what bad there is. Developed by Playground Games. Playground Games. Mm -hmm. I was I was trying to remember the the, the beginning sequence where all the dash lights come on. I'm yep. like I, I thought I saw a person on a swing there or something. I I, I don't want to say Playground and just leave it right there. But uh, yeah, Playground Games. Right. On. Well, let me do some house cleaning real quick. If you have any questions, comments, or just want to show us some love, you can find us on Twitter at JoygasmTV and Facebook.com slash JoygasmTV. You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at SoundCloud.com slash JoygasmTV or search Joygasm TV on YouTube, and no matter which platform you use to consume the show, please drop us a subscription, thumbs up, or a review. It helps us build awareness, which we appreciate very much, and a big thank you to those who have done so already. We have a splendid show for you today. In video game <laughs> news, we'll go over exciting headlines, including a certain fantasy car making its debut on in Forza Horizon ah. 3. Uh, let's see. We also have Overwatch League salary info, Fortnite, The Sims 4 news, and Microsoft's Phil Spencer on Xbox One X pre-orders. <laughs> 
Movie news is chock full of goodies, including drama between Christopher Nolan and Netflix. Ben Affleck's possible departure as Batman. Nice. Wonder Woman continuing her box office domination. Nice. A new character sharing the world of John Wick. The the latest Ghostbusters news and Todd McFarlane directing the next Spawn movie. Ooh, this is going to be a good show. It's going to be a great show. Oh it's, my goodness. It transcends good. It just uh. leaps frogs right over that. Let's see. We also have a fun tech story involving Harry Potter. Harry Potter. And last but not least, our main topic of the day will be our first gameplay impressions of the Destiny 2 beta. Bam! Now, normally I would say... How are you doing, Steve? But you kind of already (laughs) started it. So you know what? First things first, (laughs) Steve, please resume how you're doing. I'm excited. I'm like shaking. I'm giddy. That's what I am. Are your nipples hard, Steve? Um, let me check. Um, can they cut? Let me check again. (laughs) (laughs) I have diamond nipples. Oh, (laughs) don't sell those on the Uh, uh, black market. Don't want to pawn those little suckers away. You know, I, I have uh, I have a little something else to say, Russ. Right? Mm. I uh, I've been playing a little b- 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 bit heroes lately. Bit heroes by our friends over at Jupio Mins. Continue. I am now level seventy one. Seventy one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not even sure if I've gotten to like level ten yet. I think I'm stuck at nine because I keep dying. And I've reached a new area. I can now get tier four stuff. Tier four. Tier four. How many tiers are there? I don't know. That's a question you're going to ask for Shani. Oh, duck. Ask that. Go ahead. Um, and so now I can get to this, uh, this, this, uh, this gauntlet, this, um, you know, the little diamond that's like a big statue in the middle yes, of Yes, the that. big pink diamond. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now I can do that. I forgot what it's called. What is it exactly? Um, you know, it's, it's, you can get like a, a bunch of legendary gear in there and, and, um, so I, I think I'll hold off from, from doing that quite yet because I want to become a little more. Strong, a little, I, a little more yeah. of a badass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, but they did have an announcement on the game recently in the last couple of days. Okay. They have reached two million users. Two million users. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Considering it is a mobile game. That's, right. Man, kudos and to them. I uh, I was looking on the app store recently, Rose. Mm-hmm. Kind of segue or. Uh, Mm-hmm. change directions and I found a game that I'll most likely download. I haven't downloaded it yet but Full Throttle is oh. available to download. The original LucasArts title? Yeah, that's right. Is it actually being published by LucasArts there or is it some other no, it's random so, third party company? A random third party company but the game looks like Identical to the PC version. Really? No loss whatsoever. I think it's like five bucks. I mean, if there was any other game, minus Bit Heroes, that you need to download or buy. <laughs> full throttle, man. Oh my goodness. Get full throttle. Yeah. How much fun was that? that I mean, was, it's a long game, too. That's a classic right I mean, there. Yeah, it's funny and it's fun. And I mean, Mark Hamill's in it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. I'm I'm definitely getting that one. Oof. For Sheezy. Nice. What else is going on? Let's see. Oh, I was browsing through Netflix. Mm-hmm. You know that Rogue One is available to stream. I think I saw something about that a couple days ago. Yeah. Yeah. We may have to have a bro date yeah, and know, uh, watch the, it again. Turn the volume way up on that. You know yeah, what I mean? We might be able to do that now that the wife, wife. is currently out with my lovely little munchkin. Hmm. Oh, and... Narcos season three is coming out uh, in September. Pumped! I cannot wait. Have you watched all? Of them? <laughs> you die okay. up, man! That oh, that movie. Oh, I was going to say movie. It's basically like a movie, but it, no, it's a Netflix original TV series, and oh, it's so good, so good, so good. I heard a rumor too. Man, you, you just got all kinds of stuff here. Russ, I'm telling you, I've, I haven't had a life. You I don't got, have a, you, <laughs> you've got your ear to, to the ground. You, you, I can hear something. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, pre-Doomfist release, a bunch of people were playing it <clears throat> uh, over at, uh, you know, all these you know, game companies or, you know, mm-hmm. Blizzard and, and uh, GameSpot. And a few folks on Reddit 
were watching and they were, uh, played some video back. Uh-huh. And it appeared as if a few characters had different skins for their guns. Hmm. Their weapons, which makes perfect sense. Because if they're if they're coming out with more skins for guns, they have plenty. I mean, that's just more character customization. Oh yeah. But if you're in the in the in the hero gallery section and you're looking at all the skins and you go over to like uh, like the the gun that they are using and you have the option of purchasing a gold gun, mm-hmm. well, that's great. But what else can you purchase? You know, it's just that further customization sure. you can get. So they showed uh, Soldier Seventy Six having a different gun uh, or. Uh, Kind of the same gun, but a different skin. Kind yeah. of having some uh, like diamond plating on it. Kind of like a pickup truck, like the bed of a pickup truck, you know? I could use some new gear. And then Sombra had a different skin. Like it was a white and green version of the gun that she already had. Um, so, you know, it's that I think that's cool. I, so nothing from Blizzard yet on that. Someone just saw it on the video that was playing. <laughs> so I'm not going to say like, yo, it's coming out or, uh, you know, give a date or anything like that. But I mean, I think if I think it's definitely on the way, I think it's um like I've been saying, more character customization. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, we'll have to keep to tabs it. on that yeah. because I'm, well, I mean, you know me. I know. We're always big fans of Overwatch. Overwatch. And we like keeping tabs. We do. Yeah. <laughs> tabs are great. Tabs are your best friend. You know, who doesn't like a tab? I just like to leave a tab at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you know, it's funny. I was actually at um, a brand new place in downtown Dallas uh, called Happiest Hour. Uh, we had some some guests in from Spain, and so wanted to show them a, a lovely time. And I was actually I had a grilled chicken sandwich. It was really tasty mm. there, as well as a Dos Equis uh, nice. brewski. You know, just yeah. to wash it down with. Love me some Dos Equis. And it got to the point where like I didn't know who was paying for what because uh, a lot of the big wigs were wanting to treat <laughs> us. And so I'm like, do I pay for this or not? And tab and like, what? I don't know if I have a company credit card. Yeah, I just I went ahead and just paid for it myself. To, took the safe route. Of course, later on I, I talk. I was talking to one of the higher ups, and he said, Oh no, no, no. did you pay? Well, I was going to get that. I'm like, okay, well, you know. It's okay. Well, you know what? I was turning the receipt into accounting and paid back for it. <laughs> and then uh, you actually did pay for it. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that bad. It's like 20 bucks. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. But well, is there anything else new in the world of Steve Um, no, I think that that's been it. I played a little bit more competitive and, uh, never, I didn't get any ground. No, nope. I, uh, I got some experience, but stagnated, stagnated, went up, went down. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Rush? Well, let me just Talk take a little look to me here. now. So I finally beat Halo 5. Oh. I went through that yeah. and I it was just one of those things I just I I felt compelled like I had to do it just simply because I'm a diehard Halo fan even right. though I was not a big fan of the game. Right. I will tell you that as the game progressed it did get better. No. Oh. It it was just the most bizarre thing playing that game because at first I'm, I'm trudging through it and and it's just not inspiring i'm just it doesn't feel like halo game and once again as i've I've, i'm very passionate about this you need to have the character be master chief yeah if there is such an emotional attachment to that character and every time i played as Locke, uh i could care less it just didn't feel right i felt like i was cheating on on uh John 117 and uh, was not a, a big fan of that. But every time I was John Spartan, or it's not John Spartan, I John 117, excuse me. <laughs> the Spartan known as John 117. Um, I really did just have a, a great time. And the plot does take some twists and turns in there. I was a bit surprised as to uh, what Cortana ended up doing and, what she, and who she is. Do you think you're going to actually play through that game or not? I think I'd give it a go. Okay, so yeah. I'll hold off on, on any spoilers or anything like that. Oh, thanks, Russ. I will probably start to dive into the multiplayer a little bit just to see how it is because a lot Do of the weapons it. that they had in there were a lot of fun, and they actually made a lot of improvements to um, some of the Forerunner weapons from Halo 4. And so that that was definitely a, a plus. A lot of the level designs also got better too. And so, yeah, I, I'm curious to see how Halo 6 is going to turn out. But as, as far as Halo 5 is concerned, we can just kind of put that back in the, in the drawer of games and just kind of look at it as well. It was some some experimenting that went on there. And, and I think the writing is on the wall for that. But actually one of the things I did too, after I, I beat the game is I restarted the first mission and I'm not sure if you've seen it or not, but 
it has the most. Here's here's a little silver lining for that game. In the intro of the game, when you start on the first mission, it has one of the most epic cinematic moments I have ever witnessed in gaming. Like it was, it was that alone was a love letter to the Halo franchise hmm. from three four three, and even from just a, a, a cinematography standpoint, it was all done in one shot. Hmm. It was this one. You know, we we talked a little bit about that in, in previous episodes regarding different films and stuff, and. Uh, it was so cool to see them meticulously. You could tell that they they meticulously storyboarded this whole thing out before they actually got into the animatics and then into the, the pre-rendered sequences and whatnot. And it was it is after this podcast, I'll show it to you because I, I think it's 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 worthy of your attention just to check that out because at the end of it, you just get chills and you're pumped and you're like, oh man, I'm ready to play this. And so it's unfortunate that like once you do start playing, you're like, okay, uh, not feeling the spirit of Halo. Yeah. Here. So uh, aside from that, I of course am uh, continuing my injustice to goodness. Giving uh, injustice justice. You know it. Oh, you know it. <laughs> Yeah, I've been going through that. Uh, of course, Sub Zero has been dropped on there, and he's a lot of fun to play. Still getting used to him. Also, there are additional characters. I think there's another one that's supposed to drop in August, and I don't know which one it is off the top of my head. But ugh, I just can't get enough of that game. That game is a lot of fun to play. Also, bouncing over to Rise of the Tomb Raider, making my way through that. Um, of course, here and there, playing with you some mm -hmm. over. Capture the flag. A little capture the flag goodness. I have been frustrated, as you well know, dropping plenty of F-bombs on the <laughs> uh, mic. I apologize. I'm, I'm sorry, Steve. Hey, you know what, I'm Russ? sorry. I'm, I'm losing my cool at times. <sighs> I just feel as though the gaming Overwatch community has gotten so good that it's almost like a stalemate about 50% yeah. of the time, and you can't really do a whole lot. And gone are those... Lovely days when you can actually just mop the whole floor with the, just one character. I, 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 just, I don't really see that much anymore, Steve. I got a great pair of earmuffs, Russ. I wouldn't worry about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Overwatch, though, my... Um, my uh, loop yeah. You said it wrong. <clears throat> <clears throat> Overwatch. That's more like it. My count of loot boxes continues to rise. <laughs> I forgot about that. How many do you have now? 52. You have 52 <laughs> loot boxes. Yes, I do. You're still going to try it out, that little science experiment of like when the next yes. event comes up and you're hoping, I'm telling you, dude, yes. right now, that's not going to happen. I'm, I'm either going to wait till everything normalizes with uh, with Doomfist or I'm going to wait till the new event comes out. I, one of the two. I mean, I'm, I'm in no rush. I'm going to get stuff either way, so... That actually is a good point with Doomfist because mm. there is a chance, I would think, that uh, you'd be able to get some more Doomfist good goodies. Uh, but it all depends on the timestamp. Mm -hmm. So I <laughs> wish you luck. Oh, thank you, Russ. I, I wish you luck on this. You know, I, I don't, what I'm going to do one night is open them all. And I'll have a full report for you of how many little sprays I'm going to get, which is probably going to be forty five percent of all the loot boxes. You're how many so skins, burned out emotes. on loot boxes. Yeah, I know. I'm like, come on, give me something. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm like, is this going to be gold? Is it going to be legendary? Nope, again. Uh, so we'll have to see, Russ. Hopefully, I'll get like ten thousand credit for at least or something, so I can. Oh, spend with fifty two, I would think that you would get some some coin in there. So right. I have some more exciting joygasm news for you, Steve. I'm excited. If I wasn't excited enough already. I know. I <laughs> 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 so we now have listeners in the Ukraine. Yes! Not only in the Ukraine, but now we have listeners officially in the United Kingdom. We also have um, two listeners from the United Arab Emirates. Woo! How about wow, them apples? Man. Did this, you learn how to say thank you and all the and, I oh, did not. Russ, no, I let me down. I know. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm still I, I was working on it and I, I was using the Google Translate to like <laughs> type type in the English thank you and then see what happens. And it just doesn't I don't think they have that that app perfected yet. Cause I was listening to it, I'm thinking, you know, 
I need to talk to friends of mine who actually know how to speak these languages to just to verify. Because the last thing I want to do is like, yeah, I say it wrong. Yeah, but you know what? If uh, you guys can understand, I think you do. Very heartfelt, warm thank you to you all. Welcome to the family. Thank you for joining us. Any kind of comments or uh, suggestions or anything you guys have, please leave us uh, leave us a note on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or whatever you can. Yeah, love yeah. to hear from everybody. The cool thing about that is that this means that the Joygasm family now includes listeners from the USA, Canada, Japan, Germany, Spain, Ukraine, France, the UK, and the United Arab Emirates. So I am super excited about that. I mean, every time I just look on there and it's funny because I, I don't check it every day, right? but I, sometimes I'll check the, the um, podcast statistics and just to see who's interested in us, who, who's curious to see uh, what Joygasm is all about. And so sometimes when I look into the, the geographical portion of the statistics, my eyeballs all of a sudden get as wide as dinner plates because I'll see a brand new country that is now part of the list. And, and once again, even though those lists start out as like one or two, right. those numbers keep growing. I mean, I yeah. think that, that that's one of the things that's very encouraging for both you and I to continue doing this podcast is the fact that, I mean, I look at like, like Japan is either number two or number three. And that's extremely humbling considering the fact that English is not their first language there. But we have hundreds, literally, I think, I think we have, I'd have to check again. You know, I could check right now. That's what we're talking about. Let me I think Junkrat said it best, Russ. It brings a tear to my eye. Yeah, <laughs> nicely done. <laughs> yeah, Japan is number two. We have 391 listeners from Japan. So... That is extremely cool. Wait, how many? 391. Oh my goodness. So that's a big deal. So yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's really encouraging to see these numbers continue to expand and grow. So you know what would be cool is if we got to a point in the podcast where we could do a show in Japan. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That'd and be so that cool. Be incredible. Yeah. Eh. I would be absolutely down for that. Um, the only other thing that's new for me personally is actually when you came over and I was getting the, the, the final notes kind of set up for the show, you saw me watching something on the, on the computer and it was uh, the first 17 minutes of Wolfenstein 2 gameplay footage, which was featured on Polygon.com. Yeah. I cannot wait for yeah. that game. That game looks redonkulous. Yeah, that game just... I was. It was funny because we were watching the Bethesda right. press conference at this year's E3, right. and it looked good then. But well, if you recall, we were wondering: okay, are we watching pre-rendered cinematic footage, or is this gameplay footage? Because there um, weren't any UI assets that were right. noticeable on the screen. It nice. was just you know just just yeah. the actual action going on, life bar and ammo and whatnot. Yeah. yeah, it was all missing. But now this particular demo has those those elements in place, and as a result. Ugh, I mean, it's, it looks extremely violent and bloody and everything else. So be forewarned. However, man, uh, that it's just, Wolfenstein uh, I, is back. Yeah. It's, it's, I have a, a kind of a interesting relationship with Wolfenstein because there are certain times where I've bought certain games from the series and I just absolutely loved it. And other times I just never got around to playing certain Wolfenstein games. They just kind of fell by the wayside. And so, I am definitely back in the mood for some some Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. So, I do believe, Steve, it is time to get into some gaming news. What do you oh, say? I say cue the music, Russ. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> to start things off, Niantic sued over Pokemon Go Fest debacle. Polygon okay. reports that about two dozen players are suing Niantic for reimbursement of travel and other expenses since the event didn't provide the advertised experience. And this is an experience that had to do with, I think, legendary Pokemon. There was actually a video that I posted on Facebook.com slash TV that showcased a lot of these legendary Pokemon flying around and it had live action footage that was mixed in and th those types of commercials are kind of bittersweet to me because on the one hand the production values are really well done i'm like man that was so cool but then i realized oh yeah the, the game is not like that i'm not going to see some huge legendary pokemon coming from the sky it's all based on augmented reality but in any event it's it's interesting how that seems to be a bit of a, a fly in the ointment for niantic we'll see yeah. how that pans out final fantasy 15's 
Regalia speeds to Forza Horizon 3 next month. Alex Osborne reports that pr Prince Noctis's Regalia will soon join the car lineup. And this is a game that you haven't played. <laughs> I don't think you've played yeah, Final Fantasy no, 15. Yeah, no, the, no. the car looks pretty sweet. It looks like some futuristic convertible kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. According to Xbox Wires, starting August 1st, Forza Horizon 3 players who've played Final Fantasy 15 on Xbox One will be able to download the new vehicle for free. Forza Horizon 3 players will be able to redeem the regalia via the in-game messaging system, and Final Fantasy 15 players will get a code to redeem the car in an Xbox Live message. So, yeah. Okay. I, even though I'm not personally a, a Final Fantasy player, I definitely want that car because I've seen some images of it. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. It looks nice. Well, it's, 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 you got to say also that uh, Forza also... <clears throat> Forza <laughs> <laughs> also has the uh, Halo Warthog and in, uh, in the uh -huh. game as well. So I mean, it's 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 really cool to see that not only are the licensing shared. Like, hey, we're not trying to you know steal any of the Final Fantasy fare. We're just celebrating Final Fantasy with the car right. in our game. I think that's really awesome. In other news, Overwatch oh. League reveals minimum player salaries and benefits. What? Tom Marks reports Blizzard has announced the first details about pro player salaries and benefits for the upcoming Overwatch League, revealing that each player will earn a minimum, minimum, of $50,000 per year. Yeah. Teams will be required Great. to sign players to a one-year contract, which can be extended to two years if they choose. In addition to the minimum salary, teams must also provide their players with health insurance, a retirement savings plan, and housing and practice facilities Man. during the season. It's getting real, dog. Man, no kidding. On top of that, at least 50% of bonuses earned from winning events must go directly to the players. The bonus pool for all events in season one is $3.5 million, with at least $1 million of that going to the championship team alone. Wow. So for a team with only six players, um, that's at least another $83,000 per player for winning season one in addition to the 50 grand. So, I mean, you're in six-figure territory at that point. That's redonk. Yeah. Sign me up, baby. Currently, seven cities around the world have confirmed that they'll have teams representing them in the Overwatch League. We have Boston, Los Angeles, Miami, Orlando, New York City, San Francisco, Seoul, and Shanghai. Blizzard has set the first season's player signing window between August 1st and October 30th, so it won't be long before we see rosters start to form. In deed. Pretty exciting! <laughs> have you heard of a game called Fortnite? Yes, I have. Okay, I have not heard much about it until just recently. It's actually the latest offering from Epic Games. Fortnite hits 500,000 digital pre-orders. So yeah, not bad. It's not bad for a brand new IP. It's unproven. Uh, Fortnite creator director Darren Sugg revealed on Twitter that the long gestating title had sold over 500,000 digital pre-order copies. This number does not reflect the full number of sales after the game's release, nor does it take into account how many retail pre-order copies were sold. Quote, absolutely humbled by the response to this week's at Fortnite game launch. In quote, Sug tweeted, quote, 500,000 digital pre-order sales and just getting started. Thank you. End quote. Fortnite has been in the works for quite some time and was first announced over five years ago. So that gives you an idea of like just how long it's been going for. And I watched some of the gameplay footage today, actually. I think I'm going to dig that game. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty fun. Yeah, like you can, you can build all mm -hmm. kinds of different types of forts based off of the different types of materials yeah. that you scavenge. I guess it's, it's heavily into finding loot, but it's not just like weapon based. You can actually find all kinds of different types of materials. And then based off of that, and then the fort that you build, it has almost like a Minecraft-ish yeah. uh, approach to like building your fort. You can actually design it in certain ways so it looks like certain things. Right, and, and you're supposed to survive a night of zombies basically. So your fort has, you can re rebuild your fort after it gets torn down or walls get crumbled or whatever. And you can build traps and you can build weapons and whatnot. I mean, it's a lot of stuff going on, not just shooting. Yeah, no, I, I I think that that's a game that you and I yeah. will probably enjoy quite a bit. And I yeah. think, I don't know if it's just like four-player co-op or if it's like a MMO style where you can have tons of people come in. I don't. It's probably not MMO. 
there's got to be a cap on it, like a character cap. But I'm curious to see how that plays out because it looks almost like survival mode, where like you're, you know, you have these swarms of, of different monsters and zombies and whatnot coming at you. I don't know. It looks like it looks like it could be a lot of fun, and yeah. I like the art style too. It has kind of like an Overwatch kind of feel to it, but not. It's it's like its own kind of. Um, Kind of cartoony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pr pretty appealing and charming. I like it. Fortnite is set to go free to play sometime in 2018. However, I believe it's just been released uh, on July 26th. So it's out for Xbox One and PS4 and PC, I believe. Moving right along, The Sims 4 confirmed for PS4 and Xbox One. The Sims 4 will be released for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on November 17th, EA announced today. According to EA, console fans can also look forward to periodic game updates and extra content releases. Those who pre-order the standard edition of The Sims 4 will receive the Perfect Patio Stuff Pack, which includes, quote, tons of bonus decor for your outdoor oasis, end quote. EA Access subscribers on Xbox One will also be able to sample the game a week early starting on November 9th. Hmm. And I do believe that Lindsay Pearson has had quite the uh, influence on in that, so... Congrats to her for having this be able to translate over to uh, the consoles as yeah. opposed to PC. The final story we have here for gaming is Microsoft's Phil Spencer on Xbox One X pre-orders. Quote, our plan is set for this, end quote, Spencer said on Twitter when asked when the console will be available for pre-order. Quote, all approvals are done, so now just landing the announce with all the info won't be too much longer, end quote. So we'll have to see how that all pans out, but uh, I'm very curious to see just what the pre-order numbers will be, you know, when all is said and done. For sure. Anyway, I say we move right into movie news. What do you think, huh, Steve? <laughs> we got. We're gonna start this off with some some drama action here. Christopher what? Nolan what? slams Netflix over mindless policy on the theatrical releases. Pretty strong mm, words here I'm, from Mr. Nolan. Ham's fighting words. Lucy O'Brien reports filmmaker Christopher Nolan has criticized Netflix for its digital distribution model that, oh, I never heard of has issues. We'll just say that, issues movie theaters. While on the promotional circuit for his latest movie, the war epic Dunkirk, Nolan told IndieWire that, quote, Netflix has a bizarre aversion to supporting theatrical films. They have this mindless policy of everything having to be simultaneously streamed and released, which is obviously an untenable model for theatrical presentation. So they're not even getting in the game, and I think they're missing a huge opportunity, end quote. Dunkirk is optimized for theaters in 70 millimeter, and it's not the first time Nolan has spoken about the watering down of the theatrical experience. He does, however, support Amazon's current model, which gives movies a theatrical release window before they land on the streaming service. Quote, you can see that Amazon is very clearly happy to not make that same mistake. Nolan said, the theaters have a 90 day window. It's perfectly usable model. It's terrific. Addressing Netflix's investment in original filmmaking, Nolan said he would think it's admirable were it not being used as some kind of, well, quote, some kind of bizarre leverage against shutting down theaters, end quote. It's so pointless, I don't really get it. So, <laughs> some some salty words there. Yeah, good grief. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be curious to find out if there are other folks in Hollywood who share the same sentiment and... Yeah, just just how Netflix is going to work with that, because I'm sure they'll yeah. they'll be able to tinker with their platform. Yeah, I know no one knows what he's talking about, but I know Netflix knows what they're doing too. So it's like I have respect for both parties. I don't know who to believe or how to figure it out, but I tell you, it's never a dull moment when it comes to the movie industry and content providers such as right. Netflix and Amazon, because it's it's such the wild west in that regard. Yeah, I know no one really appreciates the theater experience. I mean, he, when he filmed Dunkirk, he filmed it like in the highest resolution possible to give people the best experience, the best you know visual experience. I mean, he's he's really all about that. Those are not empty words. Right. So, yeah. Right. Next, Warner Brothers reportedly planning for Ben Affleck's exit from DCEU. Now, this is going back and forth. This is pretty interesting. Initially, The Hollywood Reporter had said that Ben Affleck's Batman may not be part of the DCEU for much longer, as Warner Brothers is reportedly planning for the actor's exit from the DC film franchise. 
A knowledgeable source told the outlet that Warner Brothers is looking for, um, excuse me, Warner Brothers is working on a graceful way to transition Affleck's caped crusader out of the DCEU. This change in course will pr- reportedly begin to take them from, <laughs> I'm totally butchering this. <laughs> Good job. A knowledgeable source told the outlet that Warner Brothers is working on a graceful way to transition Affleck's Cape Crusader out of the DCEU. This change in course will reportedly begin to take form in one of the studio's upcoming DC movies. Now, what's interesting about that is that San Diego Comic-Con that just transpired had a panel in which they had the Justice League up there and Ben Affleck was, of course, part of that. And I believe there was some sort of question regarding the, the rumors that have been swirling about that. And he really did try to, to squash that. And I, of course, know that he's he's slated to be in the next standalone Batman film with Matt Reeves directing it. So there, there is still going to be some of that going on. But it's definitely curious to follow as uh, neither one of you or I. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm way interested. Yeah, you know, you know whatever happened to uh, you remember in, in the Dark Knight Rises, the character uh, Blake, who was Blake. that cop? He was Joseph uh, Gordon Levitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why doesn't he? Ever be, why don't they bring him into the whole league? He's a he's a, he would fit. Uh, I don't know as a Robin character or something. Robin was never really a part of the Justice League per se. I mean, like he, I'm sure he had made appearances and whatnot, but the the main characters in Justice League are comprised of like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, The Flash. He could be a substitute. Aquaman. A substitute. <laughs> <laughs> While Batman takes a hiatus. There, there you go. <laughs> don't don't take away my Batman. I'm not taking away your Batman. I'm just taking away your Ben Affleck. (laughs) (laughs) In more sad news, Rocky and Bullwinkle shows June Foray dies at 99. Alex Osborne reports that June Foray, the the prolific voice actress known for her roles as Natasha Fatal and and, uh, Rocky, the flying squirrel in the Rocky and Bullwinkle show, has died. In addition to her aforementioned roles in the Rocky and Bullwinkle show, Foray voiced a number of other animated characters, including Granny from Looney Tunes, Cindy Lou, who, oh, excuse me, Cindy Lou Who from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Grandmother Fa in Mulan, and many more. In addition to animated TV and movies, Foray's career extended into work in radio, video games, including 2013's DuckTales Remastered, theatrical shorts, and more. She also helped to establish the Anne, oh, excuse me, establish the Annie Awards and played an integral role in the creation of the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature. So... Definitely uh, extend our condolences out to her family, but it sounds like she lived a full and eventful life being yeah. uh, 99 years old. Yeah. That's, that's that's great, and especially considering the, the list of achievements that she's acquired over those years. That's, that's awesome. Got some Wonder Woman news here for you, Steve. Are you ready? I am. Wonder Woman passes. Guardians Volume 2 to become Whoa. summer 2017's highest grossing movie at domestic box office. Man, wow, that's really climbing. It is. Wonder Woman surpassed uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 domestically. I want to emphasize that, domestically, to become the highest grossing film this season. According to Box Office Mojo, the total domestic earnings for director Patty Jenkins' DC film now stand at $389.7 million, edging out the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2's $387.3 million domestic haul. When looking at worldwide figures, however, Wonder Woman still remains behind the James Gunn-directed Marvel sequel. So Guardians are still holding on internationally. They're like, we're still number one. (laughs) (laughs) Just ahead of its fifth weekend in theaters, Wonder Woman surpassed Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad, and Man of Steel to become the DCEU's highest grossing movie at the North American box office. It also ranks as the second highest grossing film of the entire year, with Beauty and the Beast still holding strong as the biggest hit of 2017 so far, and is now the highest grossing movie by a female director. So hey, way to go. Yeah. And I, I, I honestly, you know, deep down inside, I hope Wonder Woman trounces Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> uh, 100% yes. 
let's see here. Last week at San Diego Comic Con, Warner Brothers and DC, this is a little side note, officially confirmed Wonder, Wonder Woman 2 is on the way. And just yesterday, it was reported that the film will open in theaters on December 19th, 2019. Mm. So keep that number 19 close to your heart. That's going to pull a crowd. While we know Gal Gadot will return to star as Diana, there's no official word yet if Jenkins will be back. Once again, she's just biding her time. She's she's on the beach with that Mai Tai. She's like, <laughs> yeah, I know you love me. <laughs> <laughs> John Wick, shared universe, reportedly eyed with ballerina thriller. This definitely caught my eye. I think this has some, some major potential. Luke Riley reports Lionsgate has scooped up a female-led spec script called Ballerina that is apparently set to be used to launch a possible John Wick spin-off film, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Lionsgate reportedly beat out Warner Brothers and Universal for the rights to Ballerina, which will be produced by Basil... Lewanik? Let's go with that. Lewanik's production company, Thunder Road Pictures. See, I can say that. I can say Thunder Road <laughs> Pictures. <laughs> is behind the John Wick franchise. Ballerina's, um, oh, excuse me. Ballerina apparently sees a young woman trained and raised as an assassin on the trail of the killers that murdered her family. The script is written by 23-year-old Shay uh, Hatton, currently working as an assistant writer for Robert Downey Jr.'s production company, Team Downey. So, yeah, what do you think? Could be interesting, right? Could be interesting. I really do hope that they fully explore the world of John Wick because the first two films that they have come out have done a fantastic job of introducing us to this underground world of assassins. League of Assassins, yeah. Yeah, League of Assassins, basically, and just how they operate, how they treat each other, the do's and don'ts, the legalities, the structure in place, what happens when you go against the system. Yep. I really would love to see this go on and on and on. I mean, th- this has potential to almost be like kind of like a James Bond franchise, only instead of just focusing on the same character over and over and over again, it would be awesome if they flesh out all kinds of different assassins with different backgrounds, different backstories. Yeah. Well, I think they would have to because in the end of the, uh, I think it was the second one, like everybody's after him. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody is, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's quite the pool of people. Yeah. Quite the yeah. pool of uh, assassins. Yeah. Assassins. It, but I, and, and up to this point with the first two films, like we're kind of sort of introduced to different assassins that do certain things, but oftentimes they'll die. They'll get yeah. killed off or what have you. So, you know, granted, a couple do survive, but I would absolutely love once again to like have these like standalone spinoff movies where like maybe John Wick makes cameos in those but he still has his John Wick films and then in addition to that you also have these other characters think of it like how Marvel Studios uses all of their characters where they have standalone films for these different Avengers and then they have the Avengers film oh man yeah Right there. There's the idea. Can <laughs> you imagine that? Example. Then they have like some sort of grandiose film where a lot of them come back together and they've got to do some sort of gig or job or whatever. Oh, it's just that that formula is absolutely flawless. Brilliant. Love it. Brilliant, I tell you. Ivan Reitman discusses animated new potential live action Ghostbusters movies. Chris Morgan reports while at San Diego Comic-Con, Reitman, who directed the first two Ghostbusters films and produced the reboot, discussed that that reboot was just... Not even Listen, we're, we're not even going to go there. We're not even going to go there. <laughs> produced the reboot discussing the franchise's future on a Ghostbusters panel. According to Din of Geek, Reitman said, quote, I think we have wonderful plans, both for an animated feature that we are deep in design on already and a really great story. And, of course, a new live-action film, end quote. An animated Ghostbusters film has previously been reported to be in the works. According to Den of Geek, Reitman said the film heavily features the ghost world. Looking at both this universe and specifically the Ghostbusters from a ghost point of view. A little bit of the old switcheroo, sounds like. I'm down. According to Reitman, he believes Sony Pictures will aim to, quote, tie one of those films close to, end quote, the series' 35th anniversary in 2019. I cannot believe it. Ghostbusters will be 35 years old in just a couple of years. I'll be 37 next year. Oh, my gosh. I think I'm going to... I am going to be my... I'm going to be 40? 
Why does it suck getting old? Russ, 40 is the new 20. Don't worry about it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there are currently no announced plans for a Ghostbusters film to be released in 2019. However, this is all just speculation and him saying what he'd like to see happen. Last July, Sony Pictures Animation announced a new animated TV series based on the popular film franchise called Ghostbusters Ecto Force, which actually is a pretty cool, cool name. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing how that turns out. Finally, Spawn movie officially announced Todd McFarlane to direct. Jonathan Dornbush reports after discussing the possibility of the project in recent months, Todd McFarlane has officially confirmed a new Spawn movie is in development and that he will be on to direct. McFarlane, the creator of Spawn, made the announcement via the, his Facebook page while at San Diego Comic-Con following a panel with director Kevin Smith. The film will be produced by Jason Blum and Blumhouse Productions the studio behind recent hits like Get Out, Split, and the Paranormal Activity franchise. Hmm. McFarlane wrote the script for the movie, as he mentioned last year when discussing the then prospective film, which will be his directorial debut. No other details, including cast or release date, have been announced. Make it rated R. <laughs> Funny that you say that because last year McFarlane said that the film would not be a continuation of the 1997 film, but instead be a fresh take that has, quote, a dark, R-rated, oh, scary, yes. badass sort of script, end quote. That's a proper way to go because, I mean, that's a long time ago to, to continue another movie. You might as well start it over. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, what was that, when was that movie out? 1996, I think? 97. 97. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I... I am very much looking forward to that, although I'm not sure about how he's going to be with uh, directing duties. Yeah, I don't know, but he's writing the script, so that's a good start. We do have one final little newsworthy headline here. So going in to more of like the technology news. Oh. Just one little story. We like I, tech, yeah. You know, don't you? Well, Put it on me, right? Okay. An entirely new Harry Potter ride is coming to Universal Orlando's Wizard World. This is a place that like I have, I am so, you and I both are so overdue to go to um, Universal Studios in uh, Orlando, Florida, as well as Disney World, Epcot. I mean, I haven't been to these places in like, 10 years at least mm -hmm. it's, it's just it's almost embarrassing yeah <laughs> but anyway at universal they have like this this harry potter's wizarding world and, the, and everybody i talk to say uh, that they did an outstanding job with it so this is a, a new addition to that part of the, the theme park sweet according to universal the new attraction will be a thrill ride located around hogsmeade where you encounter some fan favorite characters and creatures from the series the ride promises to be one of the most highly themed coaster experiences Universal has ever done, combining a, quote, new level of storytelling with an action-packed adventure, end quote. The production design team from the Harry Potter movies will be working closely with the Universal creative team on the attraction. No word yet on when the ride will open. However, I do believe it is worth noting that just because... Ugh, I just, I'm a sucker for those types of rides. I love going to Universal and, and Walt Disney. So It's been a long time since I've been on a ride. When was the last time that you've ever... I think it was... Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, man, I got to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking. It would either have been... Man, I think it was junior high. I uh, uh, it was a high school or junior high, but I'm I'm guessing junior high. So you're like you have not been to one of those theme parks since like the mid '90s. Um, yeah, I think because the last like rides kind of stuff I was on wasn't movie related. It was it wasn't theme related. It was like was the most recent one you went on was like Indiana Jones at uh, Disneyland. It could have been, yeah. Yeah. Man, that means you have not gone in like over 20 years. I know. It's been a long time. It's been a very I, long I time. think, I mean, I'm not really that big of a roller coaster guy, but the last ride that I was riding was was roller coaster. It was a Six Flags kind of deal. So that, and I almost barfed on everybody like <laughs> five or six times. But, <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, Indiana Jones, Star Tours. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a, 
That was a while ago, right? Mm-hmm. That was a while ago. It's right. overdue. I think you're going to have to put that on your calendar. Yeah. I, next time I go, I have to bring the girlfriend. She's got to go with me. Has she been before? Uh, I don't think she has. She's never been. <laughs> never, ever. To the happiest place on earth. That's correct. Well, it's high time. It's high time. I'm sure that lasts a thing or two. Indeed. We're going to have to spend like a whole entire week there to make sure we do everything, not just plan something out. Like, okay, we've got a limited amount of time. We're only going to do like three rides a day. Okay. No, it's going to be a week and it's going to be like everything. Mm hmm. Well, let's get on to our topic of the day. What do you say, oh, Steve? Yay, yeah, right. First time I've heard this. Yeah. Good grief. Production value. Steve, it's always good to have <laughs> some little tweaks Man, here. where'd the orchestra come from? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm paying them in IOUs. Felt like I was uh, in the shower singing and the <laughs> bubbles and the suds were of like divine nature. <laughs> 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 the topic of the day. That's uh, you know, actually, I should probably play that music after I emerge from the shower, or even if I take like a mighty poo, just walk out and like, yes, I feel magical. <laughs> Turns your whole day around it right does. there. Oh, uh, anyway, our topic of the day today is going to be on Destiny Two beta impressions. On Destiny and dose. If you lovely listeners recall, we had Nick on, aka Big Baby Moose. From uh, DoD, which is a huge clan within the uh, the Destiny world, you can actually uh, find their podcast. I believe it's DoD Cave, and he was more than generous to actually give us a bit of a data dump on just all things Destiny. If you recall, both Steve and I were our brand spanking new. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he has your eyes. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, to the the whole Destiny series, and so we actually after the 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 last I think it was the last podcast or maybe two pod no two podcasts ago, we sat down with Nick and he gave us a tour. And so, what did you think? More overall? like a journey. Well, <laughs> it was more like a journey into our Destiny or a tour of the journey, maybe perhaps know, something. Yeah. Well, you could probably put those words Destiny tour and. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, I guess just to kick things off, what did you think overall? Well, Russ, I have to be a little bit biased because uh, it was the beta, Mm -hmm. not the finished product. You know what I mean? And this is my first time actually playing a beta version of a game altogether. Really? Yeah. So I have to keep that filter on. Um I'm trying not to review everything as far as a finished product. I have to go back to, it's a beta, not yeah, done yet, you know? Yeah, just, just focus on just what was your first impression? Uh, I, Halo-esque. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I thought the level design was beautiful. I, B-E-A, beautiful. I like how you can switch between uh, three different characters, which, you know, and that's not a thing for Destiny 2. That's a thing for Destiny, but I've never played Destiny before, so mm-hmm. uh, new thing for me. Uh, it, I, it was one of those games where, like, the actual game, in my opinion, looked better than the cutscenes. You know, mm. like looking at the cutscenes, I thought, okay, Xbox 360. You know, that you know, like the, the cutscenes, for example, in, in the Halo Classic Edition, right? Re, redone, redone over. Uh, those were to me a lot better than in Destiny 2. But then again, when you start playing the game, you're like, wow, everything here is pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. I had the same kind of response to um, just what I was seeing with the the cinematics. Yeah. And, you know, it felt very bungee. I'll put it that way. Yep. It totally felt bungee to me. And I, yeah, the the cinematics, I I would have to see more of it. I, I think if I was more familiar with, the world of destiny just because Bungie tends to have some pretty engrossing storylines. 
that I would be just more captivated right. as I'm watching it. But I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, getting into the game itself, what did you think of just the gameplay? Gameplay was definitely fun. Uh, I I went back to it after we uh, after that one night where I could never connect. Uh, that was <laughs> terrible, man. So j- uh, just for those of you who are listening, um, apparently Bungie extended out the beta period. It was only supposed to be for a couple of days, and they ended up, I think, adding a couple more days on top of that. But yeah. the downside to that was that those extra days were used for Bungie to be able to like intentionally break certain things just to do stress tests for the game and also move some stuff around and, and whatnot. And so poor Steve over here, we're... we're traversing through these alien lands and he he just kept getting dropped. You know what was interesting? One, I think the first time you got dropped, we were going over some sort of like ocean that looked like, or you were. Yeah. It looked like some sort of white milk. uh, Yeah. I don't know what it was exactly, but it was so funny because you just started romping off in that direction. I don't know if that's what you saw on your screen. Did you see that or not? No, my screen was like blank. It was blank. Okay. You're, I watch your character just, (laughs) <laughs> jog off into the distance. I was like, here we go. Where the heck is he yeah. going? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry that happened to you. I know. I'm sorry for Nick because he had to keep on uh, repeating everything he just told you. Okay, now here, now <laughs> yeah. this is what the explanation is here in the story and this is what you do. And I'm like, okay, no, Nick, no, I'm back. And now, uh, what do I want to do? Okay, this is where you are. This is what's yeah. happening. Like, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was very patient. Well, that was that was really good. But I mean, he loves Destiny, yeah. so I think he was pretty pumped to finally have us join the ranks, so to speak. Yeah. But the gameplay for me too. I think the gameplay felt really tight. I think that the more I play it, I think the more I'll get into it. I think um, some of the characters, like the the Cabal, were pretty interesting looking. I thought that um, it had a very Fifth Element vibe. Yeah. as I played through it. And uh, I'm kind of ambivalent when it comes to that. The Fifth Element is a movie that I watched and I was like, man, okay. It wasn't a, it didn't leave a, a huge impact on me. Right. Uh, although having said that, there are friends of mine who really do love The Fifth Element. They love everything about it. So sure. I'm sure they would just be going bananas over uh, the, the Cabal designs. In terms of the level design, however, I really dig the levels. Yeah. They had this nice, expansive quality to them. A lot of atmospheric effects. Yeah, a lot of atmospheric effects. Um, In terms of the the graphic fidelity, it seemed like it was more of an Xbox 360 title. And I remember, I think I commented on that while we were playing. Um, not in the sense that it's like a, like a really old Xbox 360 title, but more like when GTA 5 was released, it was, that was kind of the last big hurrah for Xbox 360 and PS3 before the, the next gener- generation of systems sure. came into view. Yeah. And I think that that's where this thing fits. And I think it's because of the fact that they have a huge scale to this title. And I think Nick was even explaining some of that. Yeah, something's got to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having said that, though, I mean, just... The, the way that they've designed the level that we were on, uh, I mean, it felt alien. It looked alien. Yeah, for and sure. And I, I really appreciated the verticality of the levels. Yeah. It wasn't just, oh, we're running here, we're going up and down stairs, but you, know, you actually had these huge structures and different terrains that just, you know, you had this expansive draw distance, and I thought that was really nice. What did you think of the costumes? Uh, they, they were so-so. Um I, I think maybe they kept them so-so because of the the higher customization that you can do once the game's out and once you can acquire all the gear and the points and the credits or whatever you need to purchase and equip different stuff. Uh-huh. So that that might that that might be uh <laughs> that might be intentional. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, just going off, I, I appreciated that they had three different costume types, but. Um, what did you think of your class of character, though? I I was the warlock. I I liked it. Uh-huh. Uh, I played all three characters. Oh, uh, you did. The, the yeah. So once, once I could connect, which which one was your favorite overall? I think I liked the warlock. Okay. Um, I was I, I was the warlock, and I liked just his mystical, magical kind of abilities that brought a new element into the shooting uh, 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 franchise. That um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I like how there were, just wasn't just shooting and blowing stuff up, but you people actually had, you know, mystical powers, like, you know, sci-fi fantasy type. I thought that was cool. That's a, that's a cool element they put in there. And the warlock had that, you know, when you hit a guy, <clears> it's actually, you know, a fire burst or something that he's actually hitting him with. He's just not punching. Uh, so that was cool. Um, Did you explore some of the subsets that Nick was introducing us to in terms of the different special abilities or even some of the, the different character traits? Uh, I was trying to, but connection was an ongoing issue. Um, so <laughs> You get everything set, and then yeah. was, as you hit OK, it kicks you out. You're like, no, ah, literally. Nuts. I mean, I got further than we all got. I mean, I got to the, I, to the boss, to the main boss Good. of that little level. Good for you. But... Uh, Look at this guy. Hey, look, how you look, doing over here? Look at this guy over here. So, go up to the big boss. She's like, hey, what are you looking at? Hey, what are you looking at? What, huh? you, you, you want my what are you looking at? What are you looking at? You want a piece of this? <laughs> I got a lot of that for you. Um, <laughs> hey, I don't like the way you're looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it, it was it was cool. I, I didn't, I can only go so far because I thought, okay, I have my time is limited before I'm going to get booted again. So either I'm going to go <laughs> you know, progress further into the game or I'm going to progress further into the, you know, explore the customization and everything. So I thought I would just push forward into the levels and that's what I did. And so, yeah, <laughs> I can't stop thinking about it. I'm like this game is going to condition poor Steve to like just always be suspicious of <laughs> getting kicked out. Even when the game great. goes gold, <laughs> man. <laughs> But I, I, you know what? I, I hate to jump to conclusions, but I think I will wait to burp to to to, to purchase it, <laughs> to burp it, to burp it, to purchase it. I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> uh, I think I'll wait to to pick it up once it comes out on the uh, Xbox One X. You know, Steve. If it would be helpful at all, I could create for you a jump to conclusions mat to mm-hmm. help make your decision. Okay. You know, we, yeah. we could have some fun with that. Yeah, we could. I'm not exactly sure what I would put on each one of the squares, but... Uh, <laughs> okay. The only reason I say that is because if I buy it for the Xbox One, I'm always going to wonder how good is it going to be if I play it on Xbox One X. Mm-hmm. You know, if the game is this good here, how much better will it be on the later system? Right. And <clears throat> I just might as well just quit that thought and just buy it for the next system. I know I'm going to pick one up. Um, so I might as well have the best experience possible. Are you planning on pre-ordering an Xbox One X? Uh, well, that will depend on the finances, Rob. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that depend on the Benjamins. <laughs> we'll see what the, uh, the green forefathers say about that. Yeah, there you go. Um, I would like to, but, uh, at this point in time... I'm going to say, uh, I'll, 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 I'll have to wait. We have George Washington. Yeah. <laughs> and George Washington. I'm waiting to join his buddies. <laughs> For the the costume design, uh, I, yes. I don't know really what to think. <laughs> Here's the deal. Okay, so I, when I, we were playing, I was playing in the Titan class. Mm-hmm. I did not care for the costume aesthetic for the Titan. Mm. I feel as though Bungie is attempting to do this kind of mashup of different aesthetics from different time periods, as well as different genres. Like you know, the Titan has those lion uh, prints, those lion decals that are on his, uh, his character. Stickers. And, (laughs) 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 And, uh, I just, it's in a sci-fi world. This is a sci-fi world that, eh, okay, fine. It could be a little, a little bit of, sp- little sprinkle, little sprinkle, sprinkle of fantasy thrown in sure. there, but but it's by and large sci-fi. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like it was almost like seeing kind of a, a Spartan, like a Halo Spartan mixed with a medieval knight. And it just didn't do wonders for me personally. I think there might be others out there that really dig that and mm-hmm. hey, more power to them. But uh, looking at it, I was just like, yeah. And then and I'm looking at the ships too during the loading sequences and we were going to get dropped into a planet. It had that huge like splat decal of like a lion. Once again, like like that traditional medieval lion looking thing on, on the ship. And I'm just like, it makes the ship look like a toy, like a Mattel yeah. toy or something. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so I wasn't digging that. However, I do believe that there should be a way that I think you can customize how your ship looks. And if that's the case, eh, then whatever. Like, right. I, I can make it look however I want to make it to look. I did think, though, that your warlock character looked really cool. Yeah. Which is interesting because they, too, have kind of a medieval-esque, almost a uh, friar tuck um I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> something. Something, something there. Uh, almost I, almost had a vibe of um, Mass Effect in a way. But, um, yeah, I, I, going back and forth on it, it's like, okay, well, it's it's not really making me super excited regarding the, the costume design, but I can get behind it. It's, it's all right. You know what I wanted to hear? I wanted to hear each character have their own voice. Or sound or something. <clears throat> because I played all three. Now, again, it could have been the beta. Mm -hmm. But when I was playing the first level, it, I heard the same computer voice through all three characters. And I thought, okay, if I'm a different character or a different race or whatever yeah. it's going to be, I want to hear something different. And even if it's just a different pitch or something, give me something different. Don't be the same computer. I want to know that I'm a different class, you know? I'm curious if they're going to have something like that in the single player yeah, campaign like, or the co-op right. campaign, perhaps we'll be able to hear some, or maybe that was a conscious decision by Bungie to not include the voices just so that you as the player feel like you're this avatar that, that you're representing in the game. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Cause when I was joined by three other, or excuse me, two other random people to complete the level, mm -hmm. uh, it didn't like there were still other races, but we all had the same, I don't, I don't know about if they all have the same voice. When I was a different character, we, I had the same voice no matter who I was. Mm. So I'm like, eh. Well, that might change. That may be just because of the beta. What I also wanted to hear too, I wanted to hear uh, more of a balance between sound effects and music because the sound effects were there and some of them were good and some of them were really flat. Mm. Uh, like some of the explosions, for example, I want to hear like a bam, you boo. And, it's, and it seemed to be like the like the the music was sourced higher like the source level for the music was higher and the music's great I mean, very Halo esque also the with music the coral, was really cool you know yeah yeah uh, so I love the music and I don't want the music to change but I want the source levels to be more even I want I want to hear and, and feel the thumping of of shooting a, a high caliber assault rifle uh, or if I'm throwing a solar grenade or a plasma grenade you got in Halo uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as something I want to hear the explosion right uh huh. And some of it I felt, and I, mostly I didn't. I mean, a lot of the sound effects, are, to my opinion, were a little flat. Yeah. Yeah, I don't recall too many of the sound effects because I was actually having to play it low since my daughter was asleep, so I didn't get a <laughs> chance to really turn it up to 11 and, and, and listen to everything. Right. I did, however, really appreciate the gameplay mechanics. I felt like it just it played really tight. I liked the subsets. I was experimenting as the Titan with... Um, some of the the kind of jumping and hovering capabilities, how some of them will just launch you up higher versus other ones that allow you to strafe kind of in the air. I thought that was really cool. I liked, um, I don't know what the technical term is for, but basically what the ultimates are for each of the characters and how you can swap those in and out. I thought that was a lot of fun. I would say the, the the main strength of the game just is the immersion factor. And I know Nick talked to us about that. I think he was very um, just adamant about how when you start playing the game, you just get sucked into this world and it's a lot of fun to play with your buddies. And I caught, I, I did get that, yeah. that notion as we were playing just for the, the limited amount of time that we played that, that evening. So I'll definitely be picking up the title. I look forward to, to seeing what else is in store and just the, the customization options that they'll offer us as well. I think that'll probably change my opinion somewhat of just what, like how the character will look and that sort of thing. They probably just, you know, threw out some more of the, the standard designs that we've seen from the box art and that sort of thing. Right. So, Yeah, it definitely was fun. It played really smooth. It did. And it, it was fun. So, it was. Yeah. You know, an idea that just came in my mind would be it would be really cool if there could be some sort of tag team oriented combos or super plays that could be done. Sure. I don't know if that already exists in the world of Destiny or not, but it would be pretty slick to like be able to combine some of those things together. I think communication is going to be definitely important with that game mm -hmm. um, because not as Nick was saying, you have to strategize. I, I never beat the, the, the final baddie. Uh, but oh, you didn't? No, I, I faced him out three times, and we got close. Like it seemed like his, 
his life was uh, an inch away from being... Uh, could you see his life bar? I could. Uh, but, uh, you know, not being able to talk to him with the other players, uh, we all just kind of run ran amok and we're trying to find cover and we couldn't strategize, basically. We were just trying to assume, basically, what was what and who was going to do what. And if I was going to, you know, run over here, I was hoping someone else would shoot him and distract him over on the other side. And, um, yeah, yeah, I just, I just wondered what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me out in the blue, out in the dust. Help me out. <laughs> Did Nick say if they have vehicles in this game? Uh, I think he said there was, if there wasn't, there was most likely going to be some sort of, you know, vehicle, um, Jumping in there, shooting around a little bit. Okay. Because I know we have the ships, but those are just kind of more mm-hmm. like, oh, we're going from planet to planet. Yes. Did you have any other final thoughts about uh, Destiny? Let me, uh, I think I wrote some stuff down there. Let me take a little I peek. didn't know you could write. I did. That's amazing. Oh, you know what? I, I had a little, this might have also been a beta thing, but um, there was no pause. Like I was pausing, trying to pause the game because I had to like answer the phone or do something. And I was like getting hit and dying as, I, as the game was paused. Like, really? What in the world? It, I wonder if that's because it's going to be more of like an MMO style. Yeah. Um, I want it, I hope they, they put a better effect in for sprinting because they almost didn't notice that you were sprinting as much. Like you knew that the screen was kind of going faster, but it wasn't like that noticeable. Hmm. Um, I noticed the other uh, folks that I was with when they sprinted, it looked cool. But when it was your screen and you, you sprinted, it was like, um, okay. And the sound effects didn't match how fast you were going. So as you were walking, you know, the character has certain movements to show, you know, right leg, left leg, you know, that sort of thing. And then when you went to go sprint, no, the sound effects weren't, uh, synced up with the movement. So you're going, Step, 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 step. And the characters' <laughs> movements are going step, 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 step. You uh-huh. know, so, uh, yeah, well, what are we going to do? When you were playing through the whole game, were you still on that same level that we were playing? Yeah. So th- that is like the one level that they're letting yeah, everybody you just, try out. You go, you go way further into it. But, okay. but yeah, I mean, the level design got better and better, though. There's, there's a lot of big stuff going on um, that you have to look out for. Um, but uh, anyhow, um, let's see. Uh, the jumping was a little bit different uh, for each class of character. Okay. And I was having trouble figuring that out on my own. Um, you know, being the beta, it wasn't really going to give anybody instructions on how to jump properly, depending on who you are. Mm-hmm. But there are times where I'm going, okay, I'm going to double jump. And then I would just hover. I'm like, okay, stop hovering and fall. And then after a while, he'd just <laughs> fall. And it just dawned on me, I'm just going to hit you know, the, the jump button again and see if I can end it. And then, then I could end it. Oh. So I thought, okay, well, that's, I'm glad I figured that out by trial and error, you know? So that made things a, l- a lot more interesting. Um, let's see. I think that's a should be about it. Think, as far as details. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, your characters can get pretty far apart from each other. So oh, <laughs> there was a time where I fell partly in the map. <laughs> and um, and it was you, like a collision detection issue where you like fell through the floor. Or well, what? no, it wasn't that I fell through the floor. Um, it was that I couldn't read the depth. Like I, I thought, okay, am I supposed to jump here or double jump here or what am I supposed to do? Like I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. And so I was supposed to double jump and I just jumped, and or maybe it was supposed to be a sprint jump. I don't know. That's what I was kind of having trouble with. Uh, and so, and so I just jumped and I fell down the cracks of you know the, the flooring. And I was stuck there. I'm like, okay, how do I get back up? You know, I was trying to double jump, but it wasn't enough to really pull myself back up on the ledge. And at some point, somebody was able to revive me because I just figured I'd die and it would respawn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that didn't happen. So I kept on dying and dying and dying. <laughs> and I think at some point, I don't know. What Hurry I, up and die! I, 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 I don't know what I did, but um, people stopped reviving me and they just continued the game. <laughs> And so eventually it, it, I, they got so <clears throat> far away from me that I, that I respawned and rejoined them at a closer spot, but your characters can get pretty far apart and still do the map. And that's pretty cool. Did you, so, so you had random players joining you while yeah. you were playing while, while I was successfully loaded. Yes. I joined <laughs> a few other random people. Did you chat with them? No. Oh, 
Yeah. Well, that's that's no no fun. Yeah, no, no, no communication there between us. Did you at least provide like an emote? Did you uh, dance for people? I I did a little bit. Yeah. Did they dance back? No. Well, now where is the fun in that? <laughs> <laughs> I see an emote uh, being a thing in a lot of these games. You know, right? so well, we got uh, emotes in Destiny. We got emotes in Overwatch. <laughs> Uh, what else do we have emotes in? I'm just trying to think. It's it's a big thing these days, you know. Pe- people like to communicate, and especially Our people like to emote. Exactly. You um, know, back in the day, Russ, we, emoting used to be like a screensaver, like Han- like like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> like you know, if you weren't moving for a long time, to, you know, as a screensaver, he would like look, look at you at and you? tap his foot and be like, "Hey, hey, you know, mm-hmm. let's go." Yeah, it has been part of the video game pedigree for a long time. It just was more of a passive thing, not more of a commanded thing. It is. And well, and that's one of the things I do enjoy about Overwatch is the idea that you can emote to your heart's content. But it makes perfect sense. And they've been doing that for a long time with especially with a lot of MMO RPGs. You you just you can do just about everything. And it adds personality, you know, a good time. I actually, one of my favorite things was uh, the South Park episode of uh, Warcraft. Was it Make Warcraft, Not Love? No, no, Make, make love, love, Not Warcraft. Warcraft. There, yeah, we go. there you go. Yeah. Dyslexic. Right. You, you, you touched my toe, by the way, Rush. Oh! You're on, your feet are on my side of the table. I like playing with your piggies. Well, do you have any other final thoughts about Destiny 2, Steve? No, I think that about wraps it up for me, Ron. How about you? I think I think I have said all that uh, has come into the noggin. You said all there is to say? I believe so. At this point in time, I'm sure I'll have a lot more to say when the game comes out. Hmm. Well, I think we'll do. Have you day. Have you I had a shiver. I do believe that wraps it up for this episode. Once again, if you have any questions, comments, or just want to show us some love, you can find us on Twitter at TV and facebook.com slash TV, which acts as a one-stop shop for a lot of the, the different headlines that we talk about and, and topics that we discuss. You can also find us on soundcloud.com slash TV or search TV on YouTube. In fact, when you go on to YouTube and do a search for us, we do have a new section called Play of the Week. It's a fun little area for both Steve and yours truly to be able to plop some memorable moments of gaming goodness up there for your enjoyment. We're also going to be look start to... Um, Man, I, both of us are just failing miserably at talking today. I was going to say, we are also going to be scouring the interwebs to look for some of your big plays as well. So you may just find yourself being featured on the Play of the Week at Joygasm TV on YouTube. So awesome. Until next time, folks, we will bid you adieu. And as always, happy gaming. Farewell. Farewell.